Welcome to another training video with Antiference. My name's Dan and today we're going to look at the Quad HDMI to DVB-T modulator. So what this product does is converts four HDMI sources into digital channels allowing a digital uh, HD distribution over a coax network. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the product in a bit more detail. We're going to look at how you program it, um, how you connect it into a normal system um, and how to get the system up and running. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have a look at the unit itself and the connections. So this is the DMHD04D unit, um, but we also do a C. This one is shelf or rack mountable, um, and the white uh, unit is wall mountable. Um, so if we just spin it round, <coughs> we can see the connections on it. So we've got our power connection for DC power supply that is supplied in the kit with the unit, USB port for programming, our four HDMI inputs, and then our RF, uh, the modulator side of the uh, product with the uh, loop input, either from another modulator or from local terrestrial services, and uh, the main output which is connected into the distribution system. So let's connect the unit up now. So we're going to use a demonstration for the purposes of this video with a single HDMI source, in this case it's going to be a Blu-ray player, and then we're going to connect it into a distribution amplifier and show you how a typical system would work. Okay? So, we're going to bring in our HDMI source, as we're just using one in this case, we'll connect in to the HDMI port, of course if you're using more than one then they would connect into the other ports. And we're going to bring in our USB cable, because in a moment we're going to do programming, and that connects into there. We're going to connect our local terrestrial services in this case, as I said previously it could be another modulator if you're using more than one in the system, because you can connect multiple units together, as you'll see I'm using push fit connectors for this purpose, but they're normally a, a twist F-type connection. That's our main output, is the white one, using different colour cables just to make it easy to see which ones are which. And then finally we're going to add our power cable plugged in there. Okay, so we're all connected and we're ready for doing programming. Okay, so this next section we're going to connect the modulator into a typical system um, and we're going to show how you set the system up uh, with a piece of test equipment so we can actually analyse the uh, signal in various parts of the system because it's important to do that um, because as mentioned in the last section of the video um, you know we've got quite a powerful unit here and it's very easy to overload the system and it may be a case if you're throwing too much signal into the system the TV either simply won't tune to it or when it does find it it will just do a whole lot of picture break up and, and you'll have a corrupt um, video feed okay so let's have a look at the system we're using a um, an antiference DA 240 for this, which is in the 75 series range, but we do several of these, um, which has two inputs. We're going to use the UHF input in this case, um, and this has got four outputs. So we've got one already connected to the TV set, and we've also got one connected to the meter. So we're going to have a look at some readings at this point as well. So we'll bring our main modulator output now into play, and we're going to connect that to the UHF port there. So everything's all set up now, so we're going to fire up the system now and we're going to take some readings um, and see how much signal we've got at this point because as we know we've adjusted the attenuation in the software um, but of course we may still have too much signal so we might need to fit one of the external attenuators that I mentioned previously. Okay, so now the unit's connected up into a typical system with our distribution amp so we're going to take a few readings now with our meter. So we've got uh, the prime easy meter um, uh, some, a good idea is to get a meter that has the ability to measure signal level and signal quality. If you can get something with a spectrum analyzer on there as well, then all the better, because you can actually see what the multiplex will look like. Um, and it's, that can be important, because if you are having problems and you look at it on the spectrum and it doesn't look like it should look, then that could be a, a sign that there's a problem there somewhere. Okay, so looking at the Prime Easy meter, um, we can see our signal level there is about 85 dB, so um, which is fairly high. Some TVs will be able to tune to this, um, but um, you may find that if your signal level is that high, TV isn't going to tune to it. So it could just be way too much signal. So um, you may want to fit the external attenuator that I briefly mentioned before. So we're going to fit that just as a demonstration so you can see what that does to the signal level. So if we just put that in line now on the input, now we can see the signal's dropped um, quite significantly um, down to about 71 dB. 
okay so um, which is a more manageable level um, by the time you've gone and out of your amplifier and into the TV because the TV is likely to be a fair runaway that should still be uh, that should still be a, a reasonable signal level to have on there you'll also see um, on this meter and um, you've got um, an MER reading which is basically to do with the quality of the signal um, this is quite a nice meter because it works on a traffic light smiley face uh, system so you can see um, exactly what where it's at um, but if you're looking at MER you really want it to be up in the 30s 33 36 something like that um, as you can see from this unit that's very happy with that signal level um, and the signal quality sorry um, if we have a look at the spectrum as well so we're just going to um, just lean in and press the button on the spectrum um, now we can see the MUX um, actually in its raw form on the spectrum analyzer um, so what we're looking for is a fairly sort of defined shaped box with a you know a wavy top to not to <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it um, now sometimes you may look at a multiplex and they'll have you know a, a big tail off for example on the shape of the um, on the shape of the mux needs to be nice and uniformly square basically that's a nice good um, good quality signal that's coming through on that so as you can see it looks pretty good and um, from here noise floors uh, nice and low which is the the, the bit at the either side um, so I th we're pretty happy with that we think that the signal coming from the amp um, is also good because that's the other thing if you do find you're getting really poor signal quality um, it could be that your amplifier is causing a problem so it's always if you are going to start to troubleshoot or you need to start troubleshooting if you've got a problem then it's it's always worth going through each component taking them out of the system and having a look to see if that is the component in there that's causing the problem for example okay so that covers the um, the analysis side or the commissioning side of the system. Uh, incidentally, it's not it's always a good idea to um, analyse the signal at the TV point as well, particularly if the if the run is either particularly long or particularly short, because there will be a natural signal loss across the cable run. So it's important to do that same process at each TV point, just to make sure the signal is a good quality and also is still um, of this right signal level as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tune the TV in um, and try and get our channels in the right position in the EPG hopefully so um, uh, we'll get the TV on now um, as you can see we've um, need to get it onto the right input so on this particular TV we're going to do digital setup this is how the Sony's system works uh, let's go down auto tuning here we go so what we're going to do now is basically scan the entire band, just like you would do on a normal setup if it was a new TV. Um, what you'll see is because we've got the channel set to channel 21, it's going to find them virtually straight away. Um, and there we are, so the number of services found four. So we've already found our, our uh, generated channels. Um, so uh, now we'll just continue to search the whole band and find all the other local terrestrial services. Obviously if you've got... Um, uh, if you set them higher up into the band, for example, you set them somewhere in the channel 40 or something like that, then of course they won't tune in until it gets to that point in the band. Okay, so we'll just see now as the tuning's come to an end, it's found a whole bunch of services there, our four plus a lo load of local stuff. So let's bring ourselves back out of the menu um, and let's have a look and see whether our channels have appeared where we want them to in the EPG. So there we are, there's all our local terrestrial stuff. If we go to the back of the EPG, because we've set them in the 800s, remember? Um, here we go, so we've got our Blu-ray, Sky, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, exactly as we wanted them. So now you may remember when we did the programming, actually we didn't set the LCN numbers for the last two channels. Um, and in fact, I set 4444 four, four of them. So we've changed those to 801, 802, and 803 as well. So they actually fit sequentially, but they didn't have to sit in one big block. Depends what they are. You may prefer to move them around to different locations, okay. So um, we can have a look actually at this Blu-ray, um, which is running a, um, a Wimbledon, Wimbledon men's final. Um, so, but as you can see now, we've got the system working. Um, we've uh, analysed it in the appropriate places. We know the signal level's good. We know it's good quality. We've tuned the TV and we've now got our channels where we want them uh, in the EPG. So, so now we're gonna talk very briefly about TV compatibility. Okay, um, the, the unit generates a DVB-T multiplex, which is a, which in normal terms is standard um, uh, terrestrial multiplex. Um, we use an H.264 straight MPEG-4 video uh, encoding format. Um, and what that means is that um, we can achieve the HD quality pictures that we want. 
Um, but also it means that because it's DVB-T and not DVB-T2, it will be compatible with some standard Freeview sets. So how do we know which ones it's compatible with? That's a good question. Um, without checking the manufacturer's spec, which obviously is possible to do, um, to learn whether the product or the TV set does in fact support H.264 um, video format, um, the general rule of thumb is if they're of a reputable TV make, um, without dropping any names, things like Samsung's and Panasonic's and the like, um, and within say a sort of five or six year age period um, and they're stand known to be standard for you they usually do still work okay so when you are specking a job it's a good idea to have a look around and see what TV sets are in there and you probably have a good idea whether they'll be compatible or not um, so uh, some of the lower um, branded products or some of the sort of supermarket specials as we like to call them they tend to be MPEG 2 only which is a lower video format and won't support this video format so what you will find if you've got a TV set that you think may or may not be compatible and you tune the TV set in, it will quite happily probably tune in to the multiplex because it is DVB-T. Um, but what you'll find is it won't actually give you a video picture. Sometimes you'll get audio, um, but if you get a message on the screen, something along, along the lines of um, video format not supported or something, then it's usually a telltale sign um, that, uh, that that TV is not compatible. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video, um, which hopefully has given you a good overview of um, the quad input HDMI modulators. Um, for more information, you can visit our website at www.antiference.co.uk. Um, but if you do need some additional support, you can contact our technical support team um, by emailing support at antiference.co.uk or contact our offices um, where somebody will be happy to help you out if you've got any other questions. In the meantime, do look out for our other videos, um, which do cover other topics of products that are in our range um, on our YouTube channel or on the section on our website. So thanks for watching.